Now what I want to look at are price ceilings and price floors. So what price ceilings and price floors represent is they represent government intervention in the market. So they typically happen because um, we think that um, the market result isn't fair. Um, so we might think that prices shouldn't be that high. Or are, are, or alternatively, we might think that the prices have to be much lower. So for instance, for prescription drugs, uh, almost every country in the world, with the exception of the U.S., um, and maybe in a few others, I, I don't know if it's exactly only the U.S., but uh, the U.S. would be the most notable example of a country that does not impose uh, a price control on prescription drugs. The idea is that we want um, other countries in the world want everyone to have all the prescription drugs that they possibly need. So um, when that's the case, then um, we want the price to be low. So the question would be, what do you do if Mm, I don't know, let's just call it aspirin. I know it's not a prescription drug, but um, let's just call it the aspirin market. So what if the equilibrium price is $10? And the quantity doesn't, quite frankly, it doesn't matter here really at this point. So what if we think that people aren't going to buy it because the price is too high? We want to basically make the price artificially lower so that more people can buy aspirin. Now, if you just said make it lower, let's say $8, we already know what would happen. There would be a shortage and the market would fix itself and we'd be back at $10. So you can't just like suggest the price should be lower because the market won't let it stay lower. Instead, what you need to do is make it a law. So what you would have to have here is what's called a price ceiling. This would be a law that limits or stops the price from rising. Basically, you're going to make it illegal for the price to go any higher than $8. So I know that seems a little odd that you would put a ceiling below the equilibrium. But think of it this way. You can go no higher than a ceiling. So this would be where you would place an effective price ceiling. Because what you're saying here then is that these arrows can't adjust. The price can't go up. The price is always going to be 8 because it's illegal to charge more than 8. You'll go to jail. So the market then is forced to charge only $8. Now, what if I put a price ceiling here? So this is still $10. What if I put a price ceiling here? So a price ceiling law again, is a law that limits the price from rising. So would this be useful if the law says basically it can go no higher than So I'm going to write this out this way so that you have an idea of what the law basically, right? I'm kind of making it like a religious law here, but it's not really my intent here. But right, you're really saying here, thou shall not charge more than $15. Would that law be useful if it was at 15 It wouldn't. Because the market's already charging 10 a lower price. So this is what we would call an ineffective price ceiling. 
So you can really place the price ceiling anywhere, but it's only going to have impact if it's below the equilibrium. If the price ceiling is placed above the equilibrium, that'll be a useless or ineffective price ceiling. We can also have a price floor. And this would be basically a law that forces the price to be at least a certain amount. And it stops it from falling. And where we're going to place it is above the equilibrium. So this would be an effective price floor. So thou shall charge at least, rather than not more than. So you see price floors, for instance, the most common example we've seen of it is the minimum wage. The minimum wage forces employers to pay us as employees a much higher price than maybe the market would suggest. Now, these might make us feel good socially, that we make aspirin really cheap, or that we give people really high wages. All right, and also I'll turn, to, uh, just because I don't want to forget to do this here. This would be an ineffective price floor. The price floor to be useful has to be above the equilibrium. This might make us feel good, that we make the price artificially cheaper or artificially more expensive with these price floors or price ceilings, but economists are generally opposed to these price controls, price ceilings and price floors, because what they do is they cause a permanent problem in the market. Here, right, no, I'm sorry, not here, no, here. we are going to have a permanent shortage. And that is what happens in other countries that do control their prescription drug prices. Yes, their prescription drugs are cheaper, but they're not as plentiful as they are in the U.S. because we just allow people to pay whatever the market price is. For price floors, now we see a permanent surplus. Uh, how we see that in the labor market is we have uh, unemployment, too many workers. See, when there are no price controls, the shortage gets removed. And when there is no price floor, the surplus gets removed. But now the law stops those disequilibrium situations from removing themselves.